Human skin is like nothing else in this universe. It tastes of the sea salt and the iron inside of men and women. Its feel arouses us. Skin is cream, sand, teak, smoke and stone. Skin is poetry, music, literature, the dreams of boys and men, girls and women. Skin is all of that, all at once. But mostly, skin is what keeps us apart from everything else on this planet, especially everything that might infect, pollute, putrefy and possess us. First and foremost, it is the skin that allows us to be here as individual men and women in a hungry world. Skin keeps things out, things that would eat us for lunch. And skin keeps things in, things we couldn't live without. Now, I told my friends I was moving to Japan to study skin, particularly skin ageing. And I did. I've already moved. And then pretty much the following week, this article appeared everywhere. Japanese scientists have found a way to attach living skin to robot faces for more realistic smiles and other facial expressions. And my friends were rightly suspicious. But alas, this isn't the lab I've joined. However, in this video, we'll take a look at this study and why it is cool, not creepy, as well as looking at the therapeutic applications of having a second skin. From the wonders of DNA, the cells that divide will break it down for you. Simplify and magnify, exploring the molecules of building blocks inside. Every episode's a journey, join us for the ride. Welcome to the Cheeky Science Show. So firstly, let's talk about the smiling skin. Here, essentially, the researchers developed a way to attach living skin to robotic faces. And the important part of that sentence is the living skin, as this skin contains collagen and human cells. The importance for doing so is by making the skin living, should the robot get damaged, the skin may be able to repair itself instead of the skin layer becoming disfigured and looking terrifying taking us that one step closer to the robots from the film Artificial Intelligence. But the reason this advance was made possible wasn't just having the human cells and collagen, it was the addition of perforation type anchors. Essentially, if we look at normal human skin, the reason it stays attached is because of skin ligaments. The scientists here took inspiration from that and added holes to the robot's surface such that the lab-grown skin could fill it in mimicking these ligaments. Another way to think about it is like skin growing roots into the robot soil. But I don't want to implant any wrong metaphors. But the ultimate test was to see if, with this structure in place, the robot can form human expressions. And the favourite of all expressions, of course, is a nice smile, which is what you witness in this video. Obviously, there are many more expressions, but I don't think we're that far away. And so in terms of applications of this technology, firstly, it could be applied to medical research, for example, testing new skincare products on the robotic skin instead of animals. It also has potential as prosthetics. We could create more lifelike and functional artificial limbs. And then lastly, we could, of course, use it for entertainment with ultra realistic animatronics for movies and theme parks. So we just spoke about putting skin on robots, but how about coating ourselves with another layer of skin? Believe it or not, it has also been tested. This time was researchers in Boston. However, this time the skin was not living, but synthetic. Now, I digress a little, but when I was a kid, my sister used to show me how stretchy her skin was before I then realized that she was wearing natural colored tights. But elasticity is one of the features that is lost with age in terms of the skin. And as of so far, it seems to be that mechanical and aesthetic properties of skin are the ones that we're struggling to be able to restore. 
So what they demonstrate in this paper is a new technology that offers a non-surgical alternative for addressing certain skin issues. And that is what makes the study so compelling, an elastic second skin. So here the authors created an elastic wearable cross-linked polymer layer that mimics the properties of young skin. In this 2016 paper, they show a pilot's human study of which the most striking can be seen with application to the lower eyelid fat pads. Here, in 12 subjects following application of the cross-linked polymer, they could see significant improvement in the appearance of the herniated fat pads. The polymer demonstrated impressive mechanical properties matching normal skin responses at low strain and withstanding elongations exceeding 250%. The material showed elastic recoil with minimal strain energy loss on repeated deformation, indicating its durability and effectiveness. So these findings suggest that the cross-linked polymer could potentially be used as a non-invasive treatment for various skin conditions, particularly those related to aging or compromised skin barrier function. However, the researchers also note that the technology may have applications in pharmaceutical delivery and wound dressings. Now, my only slight concern would be with the synthetic aspect. It's unclear what this polysiloxane and fumed silica is and how it may impact the skin microbiome. Maybe it's good in the short term, but in the long term, who knows? That being said, it seems the technology is being advanced and the second skin technology is now commercialised by the company Shiseido. So to take a quote from a book I read recently on skin, though we take it for granted, the wall the skin creates is utterly remarkable and it's constantly keeping us alive. So maintaining the skin barrier is imperative for our survival. We have, pun intended, skimmed to the surface quite literally today regarding skin biology, but with the new techniques described above, it seems that we are trying to find ways to keep the barrier intact. The key will be to make sure that these therapies have long-term safety and are cost-effective. In addition, we'll still need some basic molecular biology to understand the cellular responses to these techniques, which maybe one day I'll have some input for. So with that, thank you for listening.